Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 589. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast, the podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. Hey, everybody. Hopefully uh, things are going well for you today. Um, glad that you have decided to join us and that indeed you are here. So for those of you who are here uh, for the first time, 101st time, doesn't really matter. Do me a favor. Let's get the chat going. Type in the chat. Let me know where you are watching from uh, geographically. I don't mean like if you're on the in the bathroom, or something, you know, just let me know where you're watching from, because uh, that's what I want to know. I want to know what where geographically you are. I do know that the, we probably have a number of people in various different uh, geographies, and I just want to make sure that as we go through the information these next few days, that you have, uh, well, access to everything that you can possibly need in order to understand the six-figure roadmap as it relates to short-term rentals. So that's what we're going to be covering over the next couple of days. Now, some of you just from a home homework, yes, homework, homekeeping, yeah, housekeeping, that's the word that I'm looking for. From a housekeeping standpoint, you should have by now received uh, your access to, it's a, it's a PDF, at the top, it says, why short-term rentals? Why short-term rentals? If you have not yet received uh, the PDF that says, why short-term rentals? What I need you to do is to type in the chat, um, short-term rentals rocks. Yes, that's what we're gonna type. So type in the chat, short-term rentals rock. If you have not yet received it, and then uh, we have two wonderful individuals who are here helping us making sure that you guys get to stay focused on the information and that you miss nothing all you need to do is to reach out to megan and or stephanie so that they can make sure that you receive the information that you need uh, as well so again if you don't have there's a there's a little homework so we're gonna on each of the days we're gonna have uh, a little pdf file that goes along with uh, whatever it is that we are talking about that particular day. So make sure that you have that because I don't want you to miss out on the opportunity to win a few things for free. Ha! Which means that you need to have your homework. If you don't have your homework by the time we get to the end, you're going to wish you had your homework uh, because the free things are pretty awesome. And I can tell you this, the people who are eligible to win, one of the things that they do is that they have every PDF and they complete 100% of it because they want to give themselves the best chance to win. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. Uh, at the end of the day, the goal is to make sure that, as I said, you guys, you, you understand a number of different things as it relates to short-term rentals. And most importantly, that uh, clearly... I believe that short-term rentals are great. Uh, we've been in the space for a little bit now, but I also want to make sure that you, when, as you're looking to become an entrepreneur or a bigger, better, badder entrepreneur, for those of you who listen to the podcast, you understand what I'm talking about there. What it comes down to is when you understand the why behind a business, it can often help you with the how of that particular business. Uh, I've said before, and I will say again, when it comes to building any business, it's only five questions that you need to answer, and you need to answer them in this order. It is why, what, when, who, then how. Uh, and when you do that, you're able to build a, well, a successful organization. You're, you're able to build a cause-driven uh, organization that has a mission. And the best part is, 
is how is often left up to someone else in a lot of cases. Uh, yet, sometimes when you're first getting started, you are the why, what, when, who, and the how, and you've got to figure out what on earth am I going to do? How am I going to do all of these things that, well, maybe you've never done before? And that's one of the things that's going through your brain right now. It's like, so I'm also curious uh, to know, let me see, of those of you who are here, uh, how many of you have heard of, thought about, uh, wanted to, stayed at, um, seen a news article about a company named Airbnb or HomeAway or Booking.com in the chat. So if that's you, just give me a hand emoji inside the chat so that I can see that. Uh, because I'm curious, how many of you know something, are aware of them, uh, any of those companies that I just mentioned in some way, shape, or form? And then um, I'm also curious to know if any of you actually are already practicing, meaning you you have one location that you've been using as a short term rental, um, maybe more. I don't know. Um, and, if, and if we have any of you like that, that have uh, been running a short term rental for a while, uh, I would love to know how many you have. That's number one. Number two, same line. How many and how? How long? How many and how long? Like one unit, three months, five units, 10 years, whatever. I want to know uh, how many, how long? So that that's really what I'm interested to see. And I see a lot of the chat going on over there, which is exciting to hear uh, as well. So um, um, I was going to say, oh, Megan and Stephanie, if you can remember uh, that the individuals who are typing short term rental rock are the ones who are still need. We need to connect with them to get them uh, the PDF of the that goes along with today's information so that they have the ability to make sure that they can keep up as well. And for those of you <laughs> wondering at home, what am I looking at? I am often uh, looking at uh, I'm often looking at my phone, as you can see right here, because on my phone, uh, is the are the answers <laughs> to a lot of the PDF, the homework, etc. Because I'm making sure that just in the same way I'm asking you guys, uh, I've got my homework uh, more or less right here as well, so that you guys can uh, know that that's like if I'm jotting down, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I got to make sure you know, kind of like how the teacher does at school, where she's got it. She's got to make sure that you. Um, that she's covering all the things and make sure that she, she gives you all of the answers for the test. Anyway, you, you get the idea. So my, um, <laughs> I just want to make sure you guys got it and let you know that what, like, what is he looking at so that you don't, you know, what, what's going on there? Nope. Uh, it's my phone. And sometimes we'll be sharing my screen and we got a number of things to, to go over over that. Okay. Um, also, you will notice or should soon notice inside the Facebook group. Let me see over to I think it's going to be on this side now. If you're depending on what device you're using, like if you're on a desktop or, or, or a tablet with a full screen um, over here, you're going to see a section called units inside that section is where we are going to uh, be placing uh, again the some actual homework for things for you guys to do so there there will be actual questions for you guys to answer we want to make sure that you get it as we continue to go through so feel free to participate because as mentioned earlier um your entries are, are are gathered based upon your participation participation is can be things like uh, emojis, if you will, or it can be reactions on the screen. And it's definitely comments uh, in the stream as well. So just want to make sure that everyone knows what's going down. And that is 100 percent there. So if you are ready to go, if you, <laughs> you do me a favor, uh, I, I like to do this in some of my when, when we're doing live events, um, if you you're ready, say I'm ready. So what I literally want you to do is to type in the chat, I'm ready. So Okay, so if you're ready, say I'm ready, which literally means type in the chat. And maybe some of you, you'll put a little, I don't know, uh, megaphone after it as, as well. Whatever, you get the idea. Um, 
Many of you, though, um, you have not been or are not currently, uh, you know, as you know, here at Cashflow Diary, we do a number of different things. At the end of the day, it's uh, real, real estate is, is kind of what we tend to focus on, but it's cash flow ultimately that we care about. And uh, for those of you who are here or being exposed to us for the first time, we're definitely glad uh, that you are here. Uh, there's probably a number of students in the chat as well. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, but I do know we, we did send out messages far and wide in order to help as many people be able to find us and get here as humanly possible. With that, I now say this. One of the particular items uh, that is one of the ways to get the absolute most entries okay one of the ways to get the absolute most entries uh for the giveaways is to make sure that you invite someone to watch all of these videos right along with you and if there's more than someone want if there's more than one someone that's also fine as well so that you know uh, what does that mean? That means if you know a friend, you guys have been talking about short term rentals or cash flow or getting involved in real estate and making that happen, then now is the time to make sure that that friend is here. Because here's the one promise I can tell you I can tell you that the information that we're going to give you over the next few days, it's going to make sense. Uh, in fact, those who have acted on the information are making lots of dollars. <laughs> anyway, bad joke, I know. But my point is that there will come a point at which you go, man, I wish so-and-so was here because then I could show them or instead of trying to have to recreate the entire situation. So have them get here, have them get a worksheet, have them follow right along with you. Uh, because I know that Megan and Stephanie are doing a great job right now in terms of making sure that all of you are prepared for class. With that, um, let's begin. So many of you um, are familiar with real estate, right? Uh, you, you get the idea. It's not something that most individuals, they come to us usually understanding that there's some benefits to real estate, right? Which is great. Um so here's what, uh, you know, sometimes and, and it's many things that can push somebody towards wanting to be involved in real estate. I mean, it, it's many different things. For example, um, in our case and, and in a lot of people's cases, I've heard, you know, sometimes it's medical challenges. Um, uh, many years ago, what now, I guess uh, what happened is when when my wife is pregnant, she has a condition known as hyperemesis. It basically, basically it means Something as simple as bread, water, are, these are things that she cannot consume while pregnant. And during the, the, the first time that this happened, we were like freaking out, scared, you know, because I didn't know what it was. She didn't know what it was. It was just like, what is going on? And uh, it was very, very scary. She almost died a number of times anyway. While she was in the hospital one day, I decided to go and play volleyball. And if we've ever met in person, you already know that I'm on the taller side of life. So um, I grew up playing basketball. Um, yes, I can dunk a basketball. And that's awesome. If you've never done that, I'm sorry. But it is still fun. And which meant that when I look at volleyball, I'm like, oh, cool. You jump high, hit a ball. How hard could that be? Well, I, I did jump. I did hit the ball. Uh, but I also then landed on a guy's head. It punctured my lung and then developed a condition known as pleurisy. So here's the situation. And again, I don't know where you are today, but this is the situation. The situation is um, we were, she was unable to eat or drink. I was unable to walk and talk because in combination with pleurisy, I was born with asthma. Couldn't walk and talk simultaneously without fainting. I say that to say that I wasn't necessarily looking for real estate. I was looking for a way to earn money without, in case we, if I couldn't go to work. That's really what I cared about. There was no high school that said, hey, here's your path to passive income. There was no course for that. 
Um, and I definitely dropped out of college because, you know, what was that all about? Um, and at the end of the day, one of the first lessons that I want to make sure that everyone understands is you, you don't need a job. You need a source of income. OK, you don't need a job. You need a source of income. And that is then to say one of my friends at that particular time said, hey, you should get involved in real estate investing. And I'm like, dude, I got a credit score of 398. I got no money, nothing. And why do we as humans oftentimes when presented with an opportunity always consistently, frequently come up with all of the things that why we can't do something, something we, by the way, we've never even tried, but we're basing it on what we think we know. For whatever reason, that time I did not do that. And I said, sure, you're just going to have to teach me everything. I was being somewhat sarcastic and snarky, if you will, because I, in my head, I was sure of what I knew. Mind you, I had no reason. I couldn't point to anything that gave me such confidence, but I was sure. So I was like, well, if that's OK, if that's so true, then you are going to have to show me how to do it all with. And I got no money. And by no money, <laughs> I know some of you when you say no money, what you mean is I'm down like at. There was a time I was a financial planner and I would meet with some clients and they would start conversations like, Jay, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm down to my last two million dollars. It's getting kind of rough. Now, I know sometimes when, when I say that out loud, some of you are like, what do you mean? How is that rough? Oh, my goodness. And some of you, though, you actually can relate to that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and, but that's not the kind of no money I was referring to at the time. At that time, I was talking about literally no money, as in none, as in zero, as in we're meeting for lunch. And if you want to pay for this lunch, then and only then will I be eating today. At that time, we were making decisions like electricity or food. Which do we turn on? Which do we keep? Do we buy the food or do we turn on the electricity? <sighs> the, those were the things. Anyway. He shows me what I needed to do. I start walking the path. I start listening and letting other people's information influence the direction of my life. Because I had to face a very cold, hard truth. That cold, hard truth was very simple, very clear, very easy. My best ideas created the situation that we were in. And that's the same thing that I would submit for your acceptance, is that your best ideas, the good ones, created the situation that you find yourself in today. Whether that situation is great and all you can go is, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Or you're like, man, I don't like this reality that, I, that I'm feeling so much. And that, that's what happened. And fortunately, I was in a position into which I could no longer pretend that, nah, I'm good. <laughs> you know, um, I, I just couldn't pretend. So I just started doing what I was being asked to do, which was for my own benefit. Um, I remember June uh, 18, um, 2008, we closed our first transaction. Now, mind you, we're still squatting in bank owned property, literally running from the police, trying not to get arrested because we're in bank owned. I, I'm just trying to be really clear here. All right. And yet on June 18th, I had closed on a property and actually out here in San Bernardino, California. Oh, what was interesting about that is that I had told I had been told. I don't know if you heard this. You tell me, have you heard this? Have you been told that you can't have a property if you have a foreclosure? Have you been told you can't do that because you've got bad credit? Have you been told you need money? Um, OK. Have you been told those things? Do me a favor. Comment in the chat if that's the case, because that's what I heard. That's what I was told. So the, the challenge is that at that level of thinking, I cut myself off from potential opportunity in other areas without even realizing it, if that makes sense. OK, like just gone. I never gave myself a chance because what I thought I was so sure of, what I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt what I thought was true wasn't, period. Anyway, 
after June 18th and closing on that first property and that Biden drew, that was the first time I never even like received passive income. I was like, wow, this is kind of neat. And it was around $200 a month at the time. I'm like, this makes, it was just, it was the most weirdest feeling ever. I actually, I can remember holding the deed in my hand, wondering if someone saw me or was going to come and take it away because I'm like, I still have bad credit. Don't they know? <laughs> oh, 398 guys who in the chat did you have a score did you even know credit scores went down to 398 you can be honest and say no dude i had no clue you were jacked up because that's the truth yet i was also in the process of doing something that i, I had no idea beginning something that was changing anyway one of the next things i want to make sure i leave you with as we get into and continue with understanding is that you can play any game, any game, if you're taught the rules. You know, you've learned to play checkers. You've also learned, some of you, to play chess. Um, many of you have played the, what is it, the game of life. You've played Monopoly. Some of you have played my favorite game, Cashflow 101. You weren't born knowing those rules. You had to learn them. And real estate and business is literally no different. You have to learn the rules. You can't just jump in and go, cool, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. In the marketplace, it really doesn't care. It'll tell you that you don't know what you're doing with no sales, no clicks, no leads, no, 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 nothing. No audience, nothing. That's how you know the, the pot, the, 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 you can start a podcast, but if you don't, you know, no audience, Marketplace is telling you something. Anyway, shortly after understanding that, hey, this is a skill set, I realized something. Hey, if this is a skill set, then the only limitation is the number of times that I can execute it. Cool. So I started trying to execute it more. Three weeks after we closed on the first one, we did 10 more. A few weeks after that, we did more. We kept doing more. And here's what I am trying to say to you very clearly and what was true late night tv fashion first six months of 2008 were not that great the last six months of 2008 starting june 18th almost the dead center of the year we ended up creating six figure income in six months now in my family tree no household had ever done that let alone one person so my family tree changed at that particular moment. And I had no clue what was happening. And it was all because for one of those few times where when I did not let what I did not know get in the way. What I thought was true wasn't. Anyway, we've since gone on uh, that uh, to do well over 200 transactions as, as wholesalers. That was great. And for those of you who may not be familiar with that particular strategy, what that simply means is that we would earn between two and uh, 26,000. Yes, between two and $26,000 per transaction and close it within 72 hours. 72 hours. And that was that is great, by the way. Um, shortly after that, though, I got introduced to the tax man. I, had n <laughs> I did not know what I was doing. Um, and... After you pay that tax bill once, again, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I just said, is there anything I can do to make sure that that doesn't happen again? Because that was not fun. I had never seen anything. I, 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 just the tax preparation bill was something that was amazing to me. I'm just like, wow, I, I can't turbo tax this anymore. <laughs> you know, life was changing. I need a person. Help, please. Um. But I just learned that, that there was a better way. That, that's basically what was happening, is that I started out with uh, uh, wholesaling. I'm like, oh, this is great, because it solved the problem at the time. And then what ended up happening is I was like, oh, well, I don't like that part. Is there anything I can do about that? And then I learned some more. And it became, well, if you want to get rid of or handle your what is known as your adjusted gross income, you better start like working with your taxes and having some of these benefits. And I'm like, what benefits? And that was the first time I learned that it, it, the government will gladly give you all your tax money back. You just got to do one of four things. 
You got to learn to provide energy. You can provide food. You can provide housing or you can provide jobs. Do any one of those things and they will give you your tax money back. And I'm like, well, I can provide housing and jobs. Okay. And then it became a quote unquote race to figure out how many houses, how many jobs, what did I have to do in order to get the tax money back? I just did the math, said, cool, let's go. And that's what we started doing. Um, And we started out with single family houses. Literally hundreds of those guys. Lots. And what you don't, what I learned through that process was, man, this, this, there's a lot of roofs to repair. It's hard to have a house to, 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 to be able to offset deferred maintenance. I mean, there was just a lot of things that were learned in the process. But again, just kept going. So I was like, okay, cool. I like what's happening now from a tax perspective, but I don't like all of this repair stuff. What else can I do? Oh, I can be the bank. Great. So then it became a collection of mortgages. No joke. Lots of mortgages. Now I've got, I'm on the other side of the transaction. And instead of having to deal with the repairs, I, uh, <laughs> I was just waiting for the money to arrive. That's really what it was. It, the, the true mailbox money situation. You know, you just wake up and go to the mailbox. And at that point, it was wake up, go to the mailbox, hand the, uh, the, 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 the mail over to my uh, CFO at the time. And, and that was like my work day, <laughs> literally. Um, and then we, we just kept pursuing, kept doing more. Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey. And what I want to say to you is that the number one mistake that I have ever made in business, number one, has been waiting too long to do the books, waiting too long to get the bookkeepers, the accountants, the CPAs, the CFOs involved. And I don't want you to make that same mistake. That mistake cost me over six figures, and now for a significant discount, you have the ability to get your books together using FreshBooks. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cashflow diary. Again, that's gofreshbooks.com forward slash cashflow diary. FreshBooks is the easy to use software designed to help you, the small business owner, the freelancer, get organized and save time on invoicing, getting paid faster, keeping those books in order so that it becomes a bonus for you to do your taxes as opposed to a burden. Go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary and get started today. And now let's get back to the rest of the story. I wanted, uh, then my CFO came to me and said something to the effect of you you are spending too much time relative to the income you're generating per transaction. I'm like, what? Now, mind you, you got a lot of passive income coming on. And I'm like, who are you to tell me that what I'm doing ain't efficient? Anyway, she was right. So I was like, well, what do I need to do? She's like, you need to earn more money per transaction, but spend the same amount of time. I was like, how do I do that? She's like, that's your problem, not mine. Cool. That's how I got into apartments because that was the only answer I knew. I'm like, so I guess that means if instead of working on all these single family houses, if I say do five, 10, 20 units at a time in an apartment building, would that do it? She's like, yeah, I'm like, okay, then I guess I'll start doing that. That was the decision moved in that direction. Um, then over time realized apartments were great, but I also started learning other interesting quirky things. Um, I, did not know, but billboards and toll roads and all of these other things were also things that could cash flow. So I ended up with the cell phone tower. Also interesting. And that also led to retail commercial. Also interesting stuff. All of these transactions, all of these things, all of this experience, really long story short, we end up in a situation in which, you know what? We got a lot of units. And there's not a whole lot for us to do every day. Uh, I found myself in a situation around 38 years old where I could effectively call myself retired. And I was also bored. And that was also really bad for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we, we, we went through a, a piece where, uh, because of, again, I'll just say that took my eye off the ball and somebody was able to get away with around $800,000. That was not a good day. Week, month, years, all of these things just wasn't a good time. However, 
here's what I've learned along the way. And running a portfolio that was, you know, hundreds of units, 400 plus units all across the, the, the United States, I learned systems because through that, through those systems, I was still able to live in Southern California like I do today. Yet the properties were able to be in Michigan, in Georgia, in Tennessee, in Michigan, Georgia, Tennessee, Colorado, and there's probably more states. I just don't remember them right now anymore. Um, and what's interesting about that is that was very valuable skill. Still is to this day. However, I also learned something else that you can get hit really hard, $800,000 hard, in fact, and you can still survive. You can make a mistake and recover. In fact, you can make really big mistakes that you would never imagine seeing and recover, provided you've built a strong team. If you've built a strong team, you've got a good support system. See, I, I have an incredible spouse, an incredible church, incredible Lord. All of those things come together at moments like that to make sure that we can keep moving forward. But I also had a bigger problem. The bigger problem wasn't so much that we had a whole bunch of property and all this other stuff. It was, was I making a difference? That was the problem. Period. And it started out trying to make a difference just in my kid's life. That's how Cash Flow Diary became and got started. And then it became, can I make a difference in other people's lives? And I know right now you're like, what does this have to do with short-term rentals? I want you to hear the thread and the theme. Because all of us have a story, have a reason why we do what we do and what is better than what. And for some of you, unless I go through this, you question, you wonder, does he really have real estate experience? Because I heard that fix and flip was great. And what about short sales? And what about land deals? And what about this? And what about that? And what I am trying to impress upon you is that it's more than just the numbers. Although the numbers are great, it's more than just the numbers. It's also quality of life that matters. Um, and here's where we end up today, or at least a little bit further. As I start developing Cashflow Diary and flying around the country and the world teaching individuals, um, some of the individuals come to me one day and just simply say, hey, Jay, I know. Thank you for helping us, you know, with raise capital, et cetera. Great. Awesome. And here's what we did with the money. Now, at this point in my career, I had heard. Thank you. I had heard the thank you for teaching me X, Y, Z. But this is what I did instead because I thought it was a better idea stuff. I had heard that so many times that I was often going, oh, crud, what happened now? That That's what I was saying in the back of my head. And then. They just continue to explain themselves that, hey, we, we started here. We ended up here. Um, we were doing student housing, but we started, we took the capital and we did this. And I was like, okay, tell me more. And they're like, yeah, and the numbers are now such that it's, it's very confusing for us. We don't know where to spend our time. I'm like, what do you mean? How is that possible? And what they were doing at the time, that's when I got introduced to Airbnb. Uh, this was four or five years ago now. And they said very simply, we just don't know how to divide our time anymore. And I'm like, well, the, the, that's easy. Let's just look, let's meet. Let's look at the math. The math will tell you what to do. And we meet at one of my favorite uh, hot dog places uh, in Long Beach. I grew up in Germany, so I like bratwurst like crazy. You know, bratwurst, between bratwurst and bacon. I mean, if you get both of those in the same day, I think you've had a good day. Moving on. Here's my point. I'm sitting down. Bratwurst is here, mind you. But my eyes are glued to this Excel sheet <laughs> because I couldn't ignore what I was seeing. And I started asking them, is that every month? And they said, yeah. And I'm like, are you sure? Because this is, I mean, I just never seen anything like that. Mind you, I've been all across the globe. I've taught on cruise ships, foreign countries. I, I, anyway, lots of stuff gets offered. And this is what I'm looking at now. And by this point in my career, remember, in the back of my head, I'm thinking things like, how am I going to make a difference? I'm not making a difference in my own backyard, but hey, I've got property everywhere else. That's wonderful. 
those things become important. And one of the interesting things about real estate is that traditional real estate is a great way to build wealth and a horrible way to try to build income. See, what ends up happening is the the deferred maintenance piece gets in the way. You start wanting to provide a better product. Do I'm just curious, how many of you, show of hands in the chat, want to provide a great product? Just give me a hand emoji. Just, I want to provide a great product because I believe that that's who you are. You want to provide a great product. You don't just want to be the proverbial, quote unquote, slumlord. The challenge with that is that you're often making the decision that, you know what, if I provide a great product, then there means there goes the cash flow because it's either deferred maintenance or cash flow, especially when you still have the mortgage or debt service for you loan people <laughs> on, on here today, um, but it's especially since you still have that to pay. See, But I don't know how many people you listen to will tell you that. I don't know how many people you listen to have had that experience. But I know that that's, that's, that's the thing. This is part of the trade-off. Additionally, when you're building a large portfolio or you have dreams of doing that and you, you think you look up on YouTube or something and passive income and all this stuff is what you want, it's possible. Real estate makes it more probable for most individuals. But here's the other thing that they, they, they don't always say is that Sometimes your geography can be very limiting. Some of you right now, you are in ge- uh, geographies where <laughs> the houses are a small fortune. The down payments are hundreds of thousands of dollars, definitely tens of thousands. But some of you, you and you know who you are, you're in those geographies that are hundreds of thousands of dollars. So when you get bit by the residual or, or sorry, passive income bug and you're like real estate, real estate, real estate to get one transaction done is such a huge risk. I mean, it's massive. And sometimes you, 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 if you're trying to hold that property, you have to make a 30 year commitment, 30 year commitment. And although this is sad to say, but in today's world, most marriages don't last that long. But yet you make a commitment to a property when you have no experience. So because of that, what you do is you start flying and go to other places where the land is cheaper and the properties are less money, which, okay, great, works out. And and you know what? For some of you, (laughs) you live in those places where the land is cheaper and the houses are, are less money. And then you know what happens? What happens is now you build a great portfolio, but because of where you live and where the portfolio is, it's not in one of the primary markets. So what ends up happening is you you end up with a, you have to compromise because you can't find all the staff you need. And that's hard because nobody wants to live wherever yet this is. I mean, not not all of the resources you need. And what's worse is, as you begin to age and get older, you start thinking about transitioning those assets. And you're like, how is my daughter going to, how is my son? I mean, you know them. You, I mean, you raised them. You're like, oh, Jimmy is not exactly going to be able to run this, you know? And n- now it becomes, how do I transition this stuff? And that becomes this whole new cycle of stuff and challenge. Geography is limiting, you know? You, you you can lack the resource once it's built, depending on where you are. And it, it's transitioning assets for legacy is quite challenging. So if you can imagine all of this is going through my head as I'm look at I got a nice, warm, perfectly made bratwurst with all of the must, the spicy brown must, and everything that I love. Yet I'm looking at this Excel sheet because in the back of my mind, what's going on is, is this really it? Is this finally an opportunity to provide jobs locally? Is this what's going on? Is this finally an opportunity for me to to affect the individuals at my church and provide jobs that, that, that I can now see? Don't get me wrong. I appreciate what we've been able to do for all of the cities we've operated in. 
and operate in. Yet there's nothing like knowing that there are individuals that you, whose lives you affect that you can still see. There's a reward for those that you don't see. And it's even better when they don't know. It's all great. But this was these were the things that were undergirding my desire. You know, a lot of landlords lose money on long term rentals for quite some time, a while. <laughs> and I'm again, ultimately, I respond to I look at and I do my best to try to understand consumer habits. Short-term rentals, the entire thing that we're experiencing right now is a response to your habits, my habits, all of our habits. Consumer habits have changed and therefore short-term rentals are now what make sense. And they make a lot of dollars too. (laughs) Here's what I mean by that. Um, You may not know or just may not be aware of this, but the idea, the concept of short-term rentals have been around is specifically in the United States since the Civil War period. When banks would go to give a loan to a, again, mind you, it's your primary residence, you need a loan, I wanna buy, great. The, one of the questions for underwriting was simply, do you have a second building on the property so you can rent it out? They wanted to make sure that you could make the payment. That sounds very financially responsible, like a bank would do, because it makes sense. See, short-term rentals aren't new. What is new is technology, however. Technology has come in in such a way to absolutely transform, flip on its head, nearly every industry it's touching. And real estate will be no exception. Finance will be no exception. This is what's happening and it's happening to you and I and it's happening in real time and it's happening right now. Short term rentals are leveraging the technology most people are are trying to ignore, specifically in real estate. And I'm not saying your yellow letters don't work. They still work. They still give you a return on investment. What I am saying is. If you spent $2,500 on your yellow letter campaign, is that the best place for that $2,500 today? I'm reasonably confident that it's not. And the same thing is true. You may have a portfolio of 5, 10, 50. You may only have one property. And for now, you may have been renting it out to one family for multiple years. Awesome, great, wonderful. And I'm just simply asking, is that the best use of the time at that particular property today? Are you yielding, keyword, yielding the most you can from that particular asset? And I'm again, reasonably confident that the answer is no, you're not. And that day, as I'm sitting there, I did eventually get around to eating the bratwurst, I promise you. <laughs> My mind went back to it, but I was very excited. Still am. And I began to dream, wonder, like, oh my gosh, that means I can do this and I can do that. I can do this. If this is true, do you understand? And this is ultimately what I ended up telling them. I was like, you guys don't even understand what you have. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, this is so great. They're like, could you tell us more? Because <laughs> I was being cryptic, but not intentionally at that moment. As I said, I've done a lot of different transactions. You take a lot of different levels of risk, whether you're a wholesaler, note broker, note holder, uh, whether you're fixing and flipping or whether you're doing short sales, uh, whether you're holding the properties long term, whether that's single family, whether that's land, whether that is uh, uh, a apartment building or cell phone tower or a commercial piece of property. This with this perspective, I come to you. Knowing that all of us, myself and you included, must have a way to produce not just income when we aren't physically awake, but income that adjusts with inflation because we have to battle fiscal policy as well. We have to. No choice. If you are alive right now looking at me and were born after on or after 1974, 
Erisa came into being. Erisa changed the game. Three years earlier, 1971, is when the rules of money were completely rewritten. And never once was I taught them. I didn't understand them. I had to go find out on my own. And unfortunately, there's too many of us out there who are, who are older, who are finding out the hard way that social security is more like social insecurity and that 401ks don't last long enough. And, and, and we're living longer. Yay, medicine. That's great. But it feels like a sentence to some people because how am I going to make enough to make it work and you're right though real estate is great but see up until this point in the story that there's been a big roadblock and it's usually that down payment how on earth am i ever going to save that how on earth do i ever get in position to make that work when i'm battling all of these other things and how many of you Feel like that that's something that's kept you out. You've said to yourself, if I only knew, if I only had access to the money, do me a favor, put a dollar sign in the chat. If you, if that's you, if that is how you are feeling, because see, tomorrow, by the way, one of the things we're going to talk about is uh, getting the money. (laughs) Okay, so make sure you definitely come back and don't forget, tag a friend, bring them with you. But here's my point. I remember sitting at Starbucks because I I was thinking the same way at this time because I left that that table that day going, you know what? Not only is this good, but I want you to understand something because, again, this is not something I've normally done. Not only do you have something here that's really good, it's so good, I'm going to do it too. And I've never said that to anybody before or since for that matter. (laughs) I'm like, that's great. I'm doing it too. Okay. Never happened. And he, but here's my point to you. Um, the next few months, I didn't want to tell anybody. I didn't want to tell anybody, not because I was trying to hoard the opportunity for myself, but because I felt a responsibility. Like if this didn't work and if Jay just goes off on some weird tangent and, you know, things don't go so well, cool. But if I say something to other people and they start trying things randomly based upon what they think they've heard either from me, then I consider that to be irresponsible. I consider it to be irresponsible to have a platform to ask for your attention, which you do give and thank you. And then not make a way for you to do the exact same thing. I... I, (laughs) not about look at me i've done all this ain't i great it's let me help you because these things are coming inflation taxes <laughs> that's typically what i'm referring to um because that's what the news is saying and and what defense do you have and sometimes the best defense is a it's a great offense but we're not taught to play financial offensive strategies and, and if we are taught to play them, oftentimes really large barriers come up first, like a down payment, like a credit score, like a, all of these things that can get in the way. And understand that real estate portfolio, the, the one that never used a bank. Guys, you got to understand hundreds of units for mm, insane what is possible. Dare you. I dare you to give yourself the chance. Anyway. Here's what transpires over the next six months or so. After that, I start figuring things out and I'm like, oh, cool. Do it this way. Say this. Do that. All these things. I just start. And then in a very, very short period of time, we end up with another seven figure business. We're like, what just happened? I had never grown anything to seven figures that quickly. Six months. I'm really trying to be clear here. And I was like, what is going on now? Are you going to do it in six months? I don't know. Are you going to do it ever? That's a great question. I hope so. I know the car works. I need you to get in and drive, though. And I'm trying to explain from an experienced point of view 
why short-term rentals work. See, I mentioned it earlier. When you're first getting started in real estate, sometimes you have to make a commitment of 30 years. Oh, maybe you ah, do 15-year mortgages. Great. Whatever, dude. I don't really care. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, making a long commitment of a lot of money, but yet you have no experience. Would you give your 16-year-old the keys to a high-performance vehicle? Probably not. Why? Because they'll probably hurt themselves and or someone else <laughs> or both. You know, and, and that high performance vehicle in many cases is still less than the piece of real estate that you are being handed the keys to, even though you have never screened a tenant in your entire life, even though that you've never collected rent, even though you've never evicted a person, even though you've never done many, many, many things and you are suddenly subject to a whole bunch of on the job training while you have the majority of your financial assets at risk. Then one day at Starbucks, it occurs to me as I'm going down this path, thinking about short term rentals, it occurs to me. I'm about to put a because at the time I was like, you know what, if I could just I knew how to get more property. So, you know what I'll do? I'll just do a short subject to some of you have heard of that. Yes, it works. Anyway, I, I'll just subject to I found a property right down the street from where I live and go. Cool. Here's one. Let's do that. I was in escrow. I was I think it was one day. Maybe one day. It was a few hours or so before I had to remove final contingencies. Meaning, once they're gone, I'm buying this house. It's going to take $100,000 to take it over and then uh, and, and do some uh, rehab. And then I had to furnish it. And in true fashion, I sit down. I go, okay, let's do the math. Let's make sure this is good. And I don't know what it is or what was in my coffee that day, but I sit down and I do the math. And I'm like, okay, that's great. And then suddenly all of, I, I get this like, hey, um, what do I really need though? Do I really need to own this piece of property? And, and then I'm like, no, I don't need to own it. I mean, that, that, that's great. It gives me more equity and that's wonderful. But what I need is control. I need the right to use the property the way that I want to use it. I'm like, well, that's called a lease. I don't need the deed. And then I'm like, well, if all I need is the lease, what would it take to lease this exact same property? And then I did the math. So instead of doing all that stuff I was going to have to do to catch up the behind and do all the takeover and the rehab, I said, hmm, if I just lease it, what what would this? Uh, I think it was a three yeah it was a three bedroom house. What what is this house gonna? What would it produce? And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. It's gonna cost me less money up front. I'm gonna get started faster, less risk. Hmm. And then it was like, well, instead of leasing a house, what happens if I lower? Like suddenly now now I'm doing business hat. I'm like, if I can take that upfront cost, well, what if I lower it? Like by leasing an apartment. I wonder what would happen then. All of those things occurred in stages to the point to where I go, oh my God, this is amazing. This is what I have to do. This makes so much sense because I ran the numbers and it told me that, hey, if I had a pile of cash, I had a shot at getting 100% of that cash back within 10 to 18 months. And then I ran the numbers again. I know what it's like to put down a down payment. Okay, cool. Once the down payment is done, how long till I get that cash back if I don't refinance? Mind you, yes, I'm aware that refinance and there are other things that are available. But if I don't refinance, because see, to refinance means you got to fit in somebody's box and that box changes. And if you are hinging your strategy on that refinance, you could end up stuck. That's a whole nother story. That's how I bought some great deals, by the way. <laughs> it's because people ended up stuck unable to refinance. But I start looking at this and realizing that, oh my goodness, it's going to take 15 years if I don't refinance this property for me to get my cash back. And that's assuming I don't have any deferred maintenance. That's assuming I cash flow the entire, that that was assuming so many things that I knew were not going to happen. And then I don't know why, how it just occurred to me that, well, what would happen 18 months later? Well, 18 months later, I'd have my short-term rentals and I'd have the cash. I'm like, well, that sounds better. 
I mean, right? I mean, because again, mind you, I'm by myself, so I don't have anyone to talk to, but I'm looking at the sheet of paper going, okay, well, I think I'll do that. And then I set off trying to find and talk to the landlords and figuring out all the things that you feel stuck on sometimes. Getting a landlord to say yes. For those of you who are like, oh my God, if I just knew how to do that, do me a favor, give me two-handed emojis in the chat. Two-handed emojis in the chat if that's you. I just want them to say yes. If I could get to a yes, that would be great. Two-handed emoji in the chat. Yes, right now. Yes, you. I know you're probably across the room. Walk back over to the computer. Go, yeah. Make this the main window. Don't put me in the background anymore. I'm messing with you. Anyway, go ahead. Go over. <laughs> Two-handed emoji in the chat. And make sure you come back on day three. Because guess what we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about exactly that. How to get the landlord to say yes. Anyway. What ends up happening is as I go through that process, I just realize that the numbers make sense. It is on trend because the consumer habits are different. It is growing. It is, oh my gosh, what I mean, and and a whole new world of possibility opens up to include this. Knowing what I know today, everything that we have done, if I was starting over today, I would, and I quote, this would be the strategy I would start with. Period. Nothing different. This would be the strategy I would start with. For all of the reasons I just told you. Because you will gain the experience. Yeah, I know you want to own property. I want you to own property, but I would rather you own property when you know how to make it produce income. See, you can't just have an asset. What produces the best ROI? Well, what are you the best at managing? Period. You know, that's what it comes down to. Because sometimes people ask me, hey, Jay, what about this location? What about that location? What about over here? What about, all okay, great. Yes, I understand why you're saying that. The, the, the real question is, are you able to manage the customer? Do you even know who that might be? Let's start with that. See, those are the things that begin to make the difference. Like, all of the difference and your ability to be successful is, do you have a system in place? Can, how can you, how can I, Jay, I have no time. Well, good news, we're covering that on day four. Don't worry, come back. Because ultimately at the end of the time, at the end of the day, like I said, it's, it's quality of life. Knowing what I know today, this is what I would do. Here's why. It makes dollars, it makes sense. Um, and when executed properly, you get to provide clean, safe, affordable housing to people that need it when it matters most without the geographical limitations, without having to, to concern yourself with, uh, do, do, do I know what I'm doing? Because you're, you're, you're going to learn literally on the job training without a 30 year, 15 year commitment. No, seems makes lots of sense. I'm not saying it's silly to own them. I'm just saying do it in a certain order. Because when you do, you come out better. You come out stronger. Many of you know people who lost property, probably in 2008, and possibly many of the ones that I purchased when I first got started, right? Well, what's interesting is that in order for the new people, for you and I, for us to get into any particular market, it must break. It can't go up forever, and that's fine. But what I'm also saying is that we've got to be a little bit smarter and know that we have a small window of opportunity in front of us. The short-term rentals make sense because the marketplace, because customers say that's what we want, period. McDonald's made sense when it did. 
because the marketplace said, that's what we want. That's it. Case closed. End of story. And did they, they've gone through franchising, all that stuff. Everything, quote unquote, new always goes through a period of shake up and, and shake down and or whatever you want to call it with ordinances. That doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means how you work must adapt. And fortunately today, because we operate in so many different countries now, especially through our students, fortunately today, because we, we get to invest so much time into individuals, um, we, we, we have the ability to have insight into many different locations and geographies that uh, allow our students to make gigantic leaps in a short period of time. And, and here's the thing that I really want you to hear. It's not a lack of information. I'm very well aware that you can go on YouTube and research stuff. I've got videos there too. I, I'm also aware that, you know, it, it, it's not like it's brand new. So it's not like a, a new invention and there's some super secret that uh, I only we at Cashflow Diary possess. I mean, I mean, trust me, Megan and Stephanie, they hear me on the phone all the time. They, they're like, wow, this is, not as, you know, it's just like, oh, well, that, that's kind of it. I mean, it feels like it, you know, from the outside in, it can look like magic, but I promise you it's not. You know, doesn't take any sort of masterful degree. And yet at the same time, we as humans, we don't change as, as in the way that we want to all the time. Sometimes we, we wait till an opportunity is absolutely obvious before we move. And what's worse right now, I hear all the time, hey, Jay, is it saturated? I'm like, nope, we haven't even begun. And one, one of the things to understand is that part of the reason you may not have seen the real estate success you're looking for yet is simply because no one's held you accountable to do so. Ever. Because, see, if, if you don't get your real estate done, you're probably still going to eat today. You still have a place to stay. So there's, it's like, uh, I, I'll do it tomorrow. And I was given what I now consider to be something fortunate is a, a reason to, to push beyond myself. That's what I was given. It, now it came, you know, with life-threatening medical conditions, which I wish on nobody. But that's what I was given. And because I was given that and have always wanted to make sure that for better or for worse, you know, what you say when you get married, I, I wanted to spend more time on the for better part. <laughs> it's like, wow, I, I guess this is what we're given. Let's go make it better. Is it can it get any worse? And the answer is yes, it can. So don't even play with that one. But my point to you is very simple. We have a window of opportunity. That window will close. And it's not just me saying that. Okay? It's not. Um, that window will close. And I'm hoping that, you know... You don't wait till the opportunity is obvious because, see, right now it's easier than it's ever been and it will only get harder. All new things function that way. This is new to a lot of people. Uh, we're still dealing with landlords who haven't even heard or even understand exactly what is this again? How does this work? Uh, a lot of our students spend a lot of time explaining that. And if they're in the chat, they, they can, they'll let you know. But my point is simple as well. Um, here's, here's what I want you to, to think about, what I want you to understand. And, and I've, got a, I've got a small little video that I definitely want you to, to see here in just one second. But what I also want to do is that I want to make sure that you guys have tonight's homework. Yay, everyone said with no excitement. Um, I want you to post one thing that was, oh, rephrase. I want you to post at least one thing that was an aha moment for you. So if you've been following along 
on your worksheets, you know right now that you have almost all of the answers except the last one. Don't worry, I'm gonna give it to you. And what I'm saying is post one thing that was an aha moment for you that you learned about building your investment portfolio on short-term rentals. Like what is an advantage that you would have if you built your portfolio starting with short-term rentals that yes, you did not own first? Because see, I look at it as a three-phase business. That's the truth. And that's what it is. But before I tell you about the three-phase business, I want to make sure that you understand that the opportunity that I'm talking about right now, that we are spending the next days helping, in some cases, some of you get up to speed for the first time, that we're doing with you, we're doing this because what it's going to do, I think it'll begin to be the beginning of the transformation of your, of your life as well. But I want to play a video for you. I want to play this video because when I play this video, here's what I believe will happen. Many more of you will begin to understand that the opportunity, that the window is closing, but the opportunity is still present. So let's watch this for a second. And... For this iNext car, BMW wants to think 8 to 10 years ahead to reinvent again and again. The simplest way to predict the future is to make it yourself. Here's to the next 100 years of innovation. Well, that's the wrong thing. Give me a second, guys. That didn't... What is that anyway? Hold on. I don't know what that is. That is, I don't even know which screen that is. Like, where did that go? You see, this is the fun part of doing things live right here. You know, that's how you know it's not tape delayed or anything. This is real, <laughs> real today, right now. Okay, what do you, what's this? What is that? Is my okay give me what okay let's try this again come on just play the video tell the people what they need to see i appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and uh i think you're gonna like you're gonna not only like this but you're gonna like well everything that we've got for you um what is that okay so what happened here is Oh, come on. I'm coming back to the statistics. I want the article. This is crazy. There you go. All right. So there it is. Yay. All right. So let's try that again. Here we go. For this iNext car, BMW wants to think eight to 10 years ahead to reinvent again and again. The simplest way to And yes, if I could skip the so ad, I would right now, but I can't. So. Years of innovation. We all live in the world and see that home sharing, home rentals are just exploding. Travelers are spending more money on Airbnb stays every year. Airbnb bookings are even catching up to the world's largest hotel chain, Marriott. Now Marriott wants a slice of the home share market. The initiative is called Homes and Villas. What was the main decision uh, behind Marriott making this pivot and investing outside of its core business? I mean, I think if you don't change and grow as a company, you're not going to thrive. There's two big gaps that we saw in this space and why we got into it. We saw a lack of curation and branding and a lack of offering a consistent guest experience. The listings are focused on luxury. Many cost over $1,000 per night. We really see home rentals as additive. If you are a road warrior and you're out there staying at Ritz Carlton's or St. Regis, W's, Marriott, Sheridan's, any of our 30 brands, and you have all these points that you've accumulated, what a wonderful option to be able to use them for a castle in Scotland or a beautiful villa in Tuscany as a redemption opportunity. And we think it will bring more people to our core business for their hotel stays when they have the opportunity, for example, to redeem at Marriott's Homes and Villas offering. 
Marriott has just 5,000 homes and villas listings. Airbnb has 6 million. Marriott entering home sharing I don't think changes home sharing overall because Airbnb obviously is much larger. Further, when you talk to a traveler, they think of home sharing as Airbnb. Our game here is not to compete with Airbnb. You know, I suppose we're competing with them a little bit in, in the premium and luxury space on a smaller scale. But our objective is really to make Marriott Bonvoy the loyalty travel platform as comprehensive as we possibly can. You guys oversee over a million hotel rooms. You don't necessarily have the same control when it comes to these homes and villas. We have very strict standards in terms of design, amenities, washer dryer, free high Wi-Fi, 24-7 service. If also for any reason there's ever a problem, we can simply take them off our site very easily, much more easily than we can quite candidly a hotel. We ask consumers in our surveys, like, what brand do you trust the most? Hotels get the highest percentage, so I think consumers will have that trust factor going right away to that, if I'm staying at this property, I know what I'm getting. Do you think that this was a risky move for Marriott? I think it was a risky move, I do. But if you live your life being afraid of taking risks, then both personally and from a business perspective, you're not going to grow. So, as you can see, that is Marriott, one of the large brands. Hopefully you paid attention and you saw that graph at the beginning of how steep the angle is when it came to the reservations that um, that Airbnb is able to knock down. And that, that steep graph is what has them concerned. And what I also want to communicate to you is that that's them dipping their toe in the water. So, hey, we're going to try it out and see what happens. And they start with 5,000 units, uh, not one. Now, again, they've got more money than all of us. They've done the research and they're entering into the market. Part of the reason you enter the market, especially at the top, okay, at the top, is because the, the profit margin uh, in general, while you may do less transactions, it gives you extra room to make mistakes. So they are literally planning on making mistakes. That's why they're starting where they're starting at $1,000 a night. Because, see, I know some of you said, well, that's $1,000 a night. There's nothing that I'm going to do that's going to be that much. That, well, it's not necessarily true. You might. And you, so, therefore, you dismiss it. But the, no, 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 no. They're not going to stay there. Because ask yourself, does Marriott, the company, the global brand, have other brands that are targeted to people of different socioeconomic classes? The answer is yes. The window is currently open. And I don't think it'll ever close. But it will get harder. Um, just like every other strategy in real estate. You know, it's easier today. Go find a, someone who says they're a wholesaler, fix and flipper, blah, 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 blah. It's been a long time since real estate has seen something, quote unquote, new. And... That's just one of the many benefits and things that 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 come to the table. You know, one of the double. Well, it's kind of a double edged sword because w w what you have is you have a situation in which we are dealing with something that's new. And yet at the same time, because it's new, some of you are still concerned of is it going to be around or and, and is it already saturated? No, not even close. Not even close, because see, it, it, when you look at charts, you, you learn that individuals, specifically in the United States in this case, we can pull up others for other countries, for those of you who, for that matters, you, you can just see that there's a continuing increase of users. It's not going down. It's not like you're suddenly going to hate convenience in your cell phone. You're, you're not giving your cell phone up. At least I'm not. Maybe you are but I'm not, <laughs> okay? Um, and the, the let me see, y there's a lot of understanding that, that really, you know what, look at this. Where'd it go? Uh, I'm looking for, cause see, there, there was a, a study that was recently done in terms of, uh, not so much a study, as much as there was a report. Yes, here we go. The um, uh, not no, not the number of listings. I want the dollar amount so that you guys can see this because this is what I get excited about for you and I. 
Because, see, it, it's one thing to find out about an opportunity after it's already established. It's another one that it's it's kind of still there is is this right here. Um, the number of individuals, in 2018 anyway, in the United States, who are even familiar, not, not mind you, not have you used it, but are you familiar with Airbnb? Now, they're not the only marketplace, but are you even familiar with it? As you can see, most people are not familiar with Airbnb. They don't know what it is at all. Yet being the key word. Yet is a very important word. In fact, if you've looked at my shirt today, you know that. <laughs> anyway, my point is it's not saturated. We're not even close. We haven't even begun. I look forward to when it, you know, when that's an actual true real conversation. But most people don't even know yet. So, like I said, please remember your homework. You know, I want to know. Give me, tell us something that was an aha moment for you. Because, see, maybe, maybe, just maybe this next statistic is that aha moment for you. And is this the one, right, one that I want? I want to make sure. Nope, that, that is not it. Uh, because one of the things that sometimes people ask me, all the time anyway, actually, um, is what... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the one. <laughs> what is it that you can um, earn? Like, how much is, you know, hey, what is this? How much am I, how much can I make? Right? Um, and then, because one of the arguments that's been out there, at least touted by some, has been... Things like um, you're, you're taking away our money. You know, that's what the hotels say. You know, hey, we're not making any money. Now, as far as I can tell, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. With the exception of the transition from 2008 to 2009, where everybody got slapped. I think the hotels are doing fine. Because from what I can tell, it's still going up for them. In fact, if you were paying attention inside the article I showed you, what did she say? Stephanie Leonard's Marriott specifically said, I believe that these are additive to their portfolio. They actually help people uh, want to stay at some of our other locations as well. So when I say to you, you know, why short term rentals? I give you everything that I've said as well as. And even if it's only because clearly Marriott knows it's time, <laughs> you know, OK, because th that's the classic. If you can't beat them, join them. Because one of the other unknown things is that short term rentals produce twice the gross revenue of your traditional long term rentals while often only increasing the expenses by about 10%. That when you do that math, you end up with, for you, you know, uh, financial people, you, you end up with a higher net operating income. You end up with, for you, for you lenders, and it's not an issue of squeaking out a debt service coverage ratio of 1.25. We start talking about two, two and a half, three, <laughs> That's what begins to happen. That's why there are some lenders who have come to the space. That's why finance is also going to change. How the underwriting changes, it's all changing. And I, I'm, I, I guess if nothing else, I'm hoping that you, you feel you have a better understanding today of why short-term rentals. Because... Fixing and flipping, it, it, I'm not saying it's going away. Not at all. But the next time someone fixes and flips, buy that thing or let somebody else buy that thing and then go lease it because that's the next thing they're looking for. You know, I, I'm not saying any of the other stuff is going away. 
What I'm really saying is that when you look at a three-phase system, this is how you and I get in. You felt like you've been shut out because you didn't have the money, you couldn't figure it out, all those things. This is how you get in. You get in because now, for the price of a lease and the risk of 12 months, that's what I'm saying, which would you rather do? It, business is a risk. Do you want to risk 30 years or do you want to risk 12 months? Your choice. Very simple. Very simple. Okay? What it comes down to is understanding. It's about risk, risk management. And when you learn to manage that risk, you can put yourself in a situation that gives you an uncommon advantage, higher returns, faster ROI, because at the end of the day, you've got taxes and inflation to deal with just like I do. But what's really interesting is that when you combine that understanding with the phase one, just go get one short term rental phase two, then take that to the 10 or more type of situation, 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever. And then over to phase three, because see in phase two, you you end up with this thing called money left over at the end of the month. <laughs> that may be foreign. Um, and. I can understand. Even as a landlord, it feels you can feel like there's no money left over. And now you have a way to make some of that happen. Because as you transition into to phase three, like I said, you've got your short term rentals in one hand and your th- that original pile of cash came back. And if you didn't have a pile of cash to begin with, you can build one. And 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 in both cases, you had no experience. But now you're prepared. Now you've screened people. Now you you know humans on a whole new level that you had never anticipated before. And I mean, you you can't make up the stories and the stuff that we as short-term rental operators see and hear and know um, and, and deal with, but that doesn't mean the business doesn't work. In fact, if you're dealing with too much of it, it could mean your system is broken. And for those of you who say all the time, well, that stuff doesn't happen at my property. Oh, no, it happens. You just don't know it's happening because you don't have a system that can tell you. You have no way of preventing it. But that's another story. I I just hope that you feel that the time we spent today was, well, well invested, I'll say. That's what I'll say. I hope you feel that way. In fact, remember, that's part of your homework. But do me a favor. If you feel like that today was fun or at least worth it. And you already know, not only am I coming back tomorrow, but I'm thinking of bringing somebody with me. Do me a favor, give me a big old thumbs up in the chat right now. Just that big old thumb, or maybe even, do they have one that does this? <laughs> give me the, the double thumbs up uh, with the fists facing each other. Just And I'll give you some time to work through that and find like, where is that? I don't remember. Um, because you're like, wow. That's just like amazing. Now, some of you, you received the invite here via email. Maybe some of you, you got here because you came in to maybe you you, you met Bobby, our, our chat bot. Um, and you're like, man, I, how do I get how can I get more people to be able to, to get here? Um, forward them that email. That's completely fine. If you got a text message, forward that over. That's also fine. Um, and like I said, the way to get the absolute most number of entries is to make sure that people you invite end up here, download the homework, and start catching up. Uh, for those of you watching maybe on the replay, inside the unit section up here, you're going to see this particular replay uh, so that you can have it. And right below it, you'll see the same homework. Because, we, um, you know, hey, I want to know, was this worth your time? I think it was, but what I think doesn't really matter. What matters is what you think. All right. So with that being said, uh, I am definitely looking forward to seeing you guys to tomorrow again at 4 p.m. Now, many of you, if you've been in the cash flow diary world for a while, you're like, wait, aren't we normally doing a QA? and a Yeah, normally, but not tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to start talking about how to find the money because see, 
I know that some of you, no matter how great I tell you the opportunity is, no matter how many times I compare what's possible, in your brain, you're still going, well, I don't have the money. Well, make sure you come back, make sure you grab. Uh, to, when you come back in tomorrow, we're gonna be doing the same thing. Remember, you're gonna enter Short Term Rentals Rocks. We're gonna make sure that we get you the homework assignment so that you can have the worksheet and follow along. And uh, we got a few more days of this, guys. I think it's gonna be fun. Anyway, it's been fun talking to you guys today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.